months, I'm going to be bringing you my eyeshadow palette collection. I've never done a video like this before, but I have way too many eyeshadow palettes. And I'm hoping that kind of by doing this video, it'll be like, you need to stop. Why are you like this? And I won't buy any more eyeshadow palettes for a really long time. I don't think it'll work, but I mean, we'll see. If you want to see what palettes I have and what my thoughts are on each one, then stay tuned. So I'm just pulling these out at random. I thought about putting them in like an order, but then that stressed me out because I didn't know how to categorize them. And I happened to pick the Lorac Pro first, and I gotta say that this is probably my favorite palette ever. Just because the colors are so beautiful and so wearable. So I, I really like Lorac's, uh, you know how they have the mattes on top and then the shimmers on the bottom. I have pan on seven of the 12 shadows. So, I mean, that goes to show how much I love this palette. But honestly, if I if I had to live with only one palette in my collection, it would definitely be this. I just think it's so versatile. You can still get like dark smoky looks. There's a few pops of color with the, the Garnet shade, um, Deep Purple, and then Sable. You can still get some really cool unique looks but you can also do it all matte look if you're just starting out your makeup collection or if you're like younger and you don't know what to get or what to ask for for your birthday or something like that try this out please if this is your introduction into the makeup world you will not be disappointed and then the next one i pulled out is this urban decay beauty with an edge palette i'm not even sure if they sell this normally i got this on a black friday deal on ulta.com um, but it has, you know, you can find these same shades that they sell in single pans anyway, so it's, you know, you can get the colors at any time. And I really like this because it has a bunch of deeper pops of color. Oh my god, these shades are so gorgeous, especially for smoky eyes. I'm going to do a, uh, a tutorial using this green just all over, and it's stunning. It's, it's beautiful. It, it basically smokes itself out, if that makes sense. Like, it, it's just, they're great to work with and they're beautiful. And then on this bottom row, you can have sort of the neutral shades. This like pewter gray with a, like an infusion of blue. It's, it's not matte, but it's the closest to matte that you'll get in this palette. And then Mushroom, which is an amazing color, a really popular color from Urban Decay. It's just this pewter gray silvery shimmer shadow and then what is this called deeper which is a gold color but it's very a very yellowy gold and I don't usually see that in a lot of palettes so I think the contrast of this very yellowy gold with these colors would look beautiful I've only had this palette for about a week and I've reached for it at least three days um, of that week ah, the brush fell out but it is the Anastasia modern Renaissance palette this palette is freaking stunning like oh my god especially if you have green eyes because orangey shades these burnt orange these warm tones really 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 bring out the green in your eyes but honestly i've seen obviously i've seen so many tutorials with this palette any eye color it just makes your eye color pop i don't know how it does it but it does and at first i was worried about the wearability of it but i mean honestly if you really diffuse it out in the crease, nobody's going to be like, why are you wearing pink? Like, it just looks beautiful, honestly. So don't be afraid of this palette. Um, there's amazing tutorials out there with how to use the really intense colors, like the pinks and the reds, and still do like a wearable look. So please don't be discouraged. This palette is amazing. If you're going to pick up a palette of any palettes that have released lately, I would really suggest this one. And then next I have the Balms New Tude Palette. I really got into this because of Emily Noel 83 and I love the palette. The only downside is that they don't have a matte brow bone color. They just have this super, super shimmery white and I love that color. But yeah, this is the one downside to this palette is that it only has that shimmery white. It's a very shimmery white, as you can see, super white, like very, very, very light. The closest to white eyeshadow I've ever seen a palette do, which I think is really cool, but I don't want that under my brow bone. So I'm always reaching for another eyeshadow when I'm, I can't just use this palette. But I also have used this for going out. I have a really, really cool um, going out tutorial, and if I remember, I will annotate it so that you can just click and another window will pop up and you can see that. But I used this color and the really deep colors in here 
These are gorgeous deep shades and they're really buttery and they blend well. I really like this palette because there are unique shades. Like I've never seen a white shimmery shade quite like this before. I've never seen this yellow shade in a palette before. I really love the standoffish shade because it's like, in diff depending on what you pair it with, it can be coppery and it can be pink. These shadows are super nice, great quality. I love the balm. They're, a lot of times they're on hot look, oat look, oat look, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter really. Um, and that's where you can get a lot of the balm products. I'm pretty sure they'll sell this too. Also, they've recently started selling the balm products at Kohl's. So if you have Kohl's near you, I definitely suggest checking this out and swatching some of the colors and seeing if this is something you'd be interested in. Okay, so back with Lorac. This is the Lorac Pro to Go. I didn't like this one as much as I thought I would, but it is pretty cool if you are going on a, like a day trip or um, going somewhere overnight and you want to bring makeup but you don't want to bring like an entire freaking case of makeup because you're literally going to be there for one day. This is a, like it says, to go. This is a really good travel product because you got all your eyeshadows and all your face products in this little container. And if you see here, I like this because it does have the matte white, it has the shimmery white, and it has some colors that you could do to make a smoky look and an everyday look, but you know, as far as like really light colors, if you really want to do like a minimal kind of light, not very smoky look, what I would suggest, because these colors can be kind of dark depending on your skin tone, um, I, I usually put pearl on the lid and then this matte shade cafe which is just a matte brown in the crease and it is that really light color so don't be intimidated by the smoky darkness of this because you can't it, I think it's perfect because you can do a day look like I just showed you and then transition it to a night look with these shadows great no matter what you're doing no matter where you're going I think you can use this I just don't find myself reaching for it so much because I do have lots of other eyeshadow products and then we have the face products. I really need to start using these more because they are really nice. A bronze, bronzer color, um, pink, and coral. But really basic shade names, but I mean these are all the blushes that, like all the blush colors I use. I basically just use coral and pink. Um, I really need to start using this again. See, this is why I'm happy I did this video because it's kind of like me shopping my own stash. I love this. And again with Lorac, this is the unzipped palette. Nobody that I follow really talks about this a lot. And then recently Emily Noel 83 has been talking about this a lot and I'm like finally. I do really like it but I don't think the shadows are as good. Like I don't know why but the formula of these shadows doesn't seem to be the same formula as in the Pro palette and the Mega Pro and all that. Um, I just feel like these aren't as buttery. But then again they also don't have as much fallout. I just think it's cool because of the rose gold shades. Because, you know, rose gold is getting popular for eyeshadow and <laughs> I got this palette a long time ago before all these companies started to make these super expensive rose gold eye palettes. But I just, you know, these lid shades are lovely and I do appreciate the fact that they do have mattes. Matte Brow Bone shade, this unconditional shade is one of my favorites. It's kind of reminiscent of Mauve by Lorac but darker. You thought I was done, didn't you? But I'm not because I'm excessive and I have too many palettes. This next one is the Cargo Vintage Escape Palette. My mom got this for me for like my 16th birthday and I didn't even hear about this, I don't even think. Um, I didn't hear about this anywhere, but it's honestly one of my favorite palettes. It's one of my most used palettes as well. Um, it's It was like a fall themed palette, but I really, really love it. These shadows are gorgeous and not a lot of people talk about Cargo Eye Palettes, but these shades are gorgeous and it does offer you the matte um, brow bone shade. Two really shimmery light shades. These matte, this matte, uh, this is like verging on burnt orange but not quite there yet. And this shade in the crease and the transition color is what got me into all those warm shades. This green is so nice. It's a light green shimmery shade and I swear, I swear it's like duochrome almost as far as it looks bronze it goes from like light green to bronze I don't know if I'm just crazy but I swear the shade is crazy and I love it and then you have the blue sable -y color and then the dark dark brown and the dark matte black and then these bronze colors I really like the formula of these these are really soft as well very easy to work with and the pan sizes are really generous these are 
much larger than the Lorac Pro shadows. It's definitely an underrated palette, something I don't see talked about on YouTube. Also something I don't see a lot of tutorials with. So, I don't know what's wrong with everyone. I don't know why they haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet, but I absolutely adore that palette. Would it even really be a palette collection video if I didn't mention the Holy Trinity? I started with Naked One. This is definitely, I think, my favorite of the Naked Palette trilogy, I guess. Honestly, at this point, if you don't have the Naked Palette, I would recommend you to the Lorac Pro, just because it's like this, but better in my opinion. But this has, holds a special place in my heart, as I said, because it was my first high-end palette. I love this. Definitely Sidecar is my freaking favorite. I don't know how I haven't hit pan. It's such a pretty color. It's like silvery, but almost with a pinky, rosy tone in it. I love it. Yeah. Definitely not the most unique set of shadows, but I mean, remember all the hype that this got back in the day? I've, my Naked 2 has seen better days. Also, I'm pretty much sure that this is not a real authentic Naked 2 palette, um, so the shades aren't as good. I don't even really love, like, <sighs> these shades are so hard to work with. They're not very soft. They're just not fun to work with at all. The palette doesn't bend. It's like very plasticky feeling. That's why I feel like it's definitely, I mean, I don't think an authentic Urban Decay palette would fall apart like this. Um, so that sucks. I really like the way that Naked 3 has like a, a set theme of the rose gold shadows. I think that's pretty cool because, you know, it's shades that people probably won't have in the collection already. And I really like these two matte shades, the Limit and Nooner shade. Oh. Limit and So, we just had a casualty. Buzz just fell out of the Naked 3 palette. Um, I'm gonna set him back in there. But, uh, that's pretty disappointing. I don't know why I have so many issues with these. That's why I really appreciated the felt cover of the original Naked because I have a lot of problems with the packaging of these harder shell covers. But anyway, definitely would suggest the Naked 1 or the Naked 3. As far as the Naked 3, this is kind of similar to the Lorac Unzip that I showed you as far as the rose gold theme. So it's really up to you which shades you'd rather have in your collection. You honestly don't need both, but I'm again, I'm excessive, so. And now a drugstore palette, thank the lord. This is the Nudes by Maybelline, and I really like this. The shadows aren't as pigmented as the matte shadows you'd see in, you know, Urban Decay palettes or Anastasia palettes or anything like that, but I still do appreciate it because they have a ton of matte shades. It's about half of the shades are matte and half of the shades are shimmery, and it's basically a naked palette drugstore edition. Of course, not as good quality, but pretty good. And then this is my Inglot Freedom System Quad. I guess this sort of counts as eyeshadow palette. I don't know. I really love the Freedom System and uh, I went to San Francisco because that's the closest Inglot to me, unfortunately. I didn't go to San Francisco just to get Inglot, but I was in San Francisco, so I made sure to stop at a Macy's, I think is where they sold Inglot, and it was really cool. There was also a Mac Pro store in there, and I'm not really on the Mac bandwagon so much anymore. I just feel like no one is, kind of. Which is really sad, because Mac used to be like all the rage, nobody cares anymore. But I saw a Mac Pro store, and that was really freaking cool. They had giant buckets of pigment. It was, it was wild. But anyway, that's not what this is about. Um, so I don't even remember what shades are in here, honestly. Like, uh, I wrote it down on the back, but it's been years, so it faded. But I really thought it was cool, the mix. I wanted to get shadows that I didn't have in my collection, really. This genius, beautiful gold that's just like really reflexive. And this plum, real, they work really well together. I really need to use this more. Only four more! I'm so excessive, I really apologize. Uh, this next one is the Anastasia Tamana palette. And I I didn't even know about who Tamana was until like re this week or something. But she's Dress Your Face, um, if you know who that is. I really, really love this palette just because it does have those, <laughs> look at me hit and pan on blush, that champagne shade again. I hit pan on like every champagne color. Um, I love it because it does have that mix of neutrals. Again, matte brow bone shade. Don't make an eyeshadow palette unless you have a matte brow bone shade in there, seriously. Um, and then this Bengal shade, great matte 
it's not even completely matte, but it works as a matte. I use it as my transition shade all the time. It's another one of those really warm shades that got me into the warmer crease colors. Sangria, Venezia, and China Rose are the reasons why this palette is stunning. Um, obviously, I there's shades like Sangria, but oh my god, the formula of this is amazing. Venezia, holy shit, you guys. I love this blue. This is the most beautiful, especially if you pair these two together. Like, I paired China Rose, which is this uh, corally shade with reflexive gold shimmers in it. I paired it with Venezia. Beautiful. If you want pops of color, oh my god. And then just a really highlighted face. I'm getting emotional. I'm really getting emotional because it's just that nice. And it's not really that talked about. I love this thing. And it's not even talked about that much. So, I mean, here I am to tell you that this is gorgeous. Um, it's really good because, I mean, despite those three shades, which are pops of color, the, the palette is overall very wearable. And I think that's really smart to make a very wearable palette with three stunning pops of color. And then I have my Lorac Mega Pro. <laughs> How many Lorac Pro palettes can I have? I don't know pretty much have all the little rock eyeshadows. This is really excessive. I'm, I'm sorry. <sighs> but, um, yeah, I've hit pan on a few shades in here too. The matte brow bone shade, once again. I really like these three up here, the Fawn, Camel, and Sepia, um, because I just, you know, they're th those warm brown, warm orange shades that you can put in your transition color. Um, oh my god, this palette is really, really nice. It's basically like the Lorac Pro on crack. Because there's just so many more shades. The only shade I really am disappointed with is this indigo shade. And I don't know if you've seen swatches of it, but it's definitely in the pan. This gorgeous black eyeshadow with like purple and blue and gold reflexive glitters. But overall it creates this like purpley glitter look. And when you put it on your eyes there's like no glitter like the glitter just like wipes away all over your face and you're left with like a patchy black matte shadow so that's a dud this is all the only reason you're getting this palette don't get it obviously but it really does have a bunch of sh stunning colors deep teal oh my god deep teal I need to use this there's shades in here that I haven't touched and I just feel like that's a travesty That's a travesty, honestly. Um, and Mulberry is the most unique plum pinky crease shade. This is like, this area right here is like Anastasia Modern Renaissance before it existed. So that's pretty cool. And then I have my two Coastal Scents. Ugh. And then I have my two Coastal Scents. Ugh. I don't even get much use out of this these palettes, I'm going to be very, very honest. Everyone was really into Coastal Scents and like BH Cosmetics uh, a few years ago and then it kind of like died down. I dropped this once and like two of my blushes shattered. This one and this one. So, I mean, not the best quality. I think it's the packaging genuinely that deters me just because the packaging is not cute at all. And same thing with this Coastal Scents shade. I use this a lot come Halloween time when I want to do like Barbie tutorials or like rainbow tutorials. These two rows towards the bottom, the neutral area, is where I lie. Whenever I'm using this palette, it's pretty much for these shades. Um, the eyeshadow quality isn't that bad. I'm not going to lie. It's not that bad. It's not that great. Um, but it does give you like every color in the freaking rainbow. So you have a lot to choose from there. That was my overview of all my eyeshadow palettes. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Uh, I hope it was mildly entertaining in some form to see my hoarding problem. If you want to see any tutorials on any of the palettes, please let me know. That's pretty much it. Let me know what your favorite eyeshadow palette is in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.